Okay, so as long as you understand basic math, well, that's enough to be able to find the area of this triangle right here. But in this video, we're going to uh, calculate the area of this triangle using calculus as well. Now, a lot of you out there might be kind of scared or intimidated by this, but I can assure you that as long as you understand some basic math, you'll be able to understand how we can use calculus to find the area of this triangle. So this is like a quick introduction to uh, calculus, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this triangle. So we have a base of six and the height of six for this particular triangle. All right, now, if you think you know the area of this triangle, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the area of this triangle using a formula. And then, of course, we're going to uh, find the exact same answer using calculus. All right, so the area of this triangle is 18. Now, the area of any triangle is area is equal to 1 half base times height. So if we take our base here, which is 6, and multiply it by the height, that's 6. So 1 half of 6 times 6 is, of course, 1 half of 36, which, of course, is 18. All right. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. But the exciting part about the, this video is you're going to understand how we can do this same problem using calculus. And you don't have to understand anything about calculus to understand this video. And uh, I'm going to take about, well, maybe about 15 minutes to explain this. But if you stick with me through this entire video, you are going to know a lot about calculus. All right, so let's go ahead and see exactly how we can use calculus to find the area of this triangle. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into some calculus. And uh, let's first take a look at area, okay? Because calculus, a huge part of what calculus is about is finding the area. So here are some basic figures that probably most of us have seen. This is a rectangle, this is a circle, and this is a triangle. Now, if we wanted to find the area of these particular figures, we have these nice, lovely formulas. For example, the uh, formula for the area of a rectangle is this area is equal to the length times the width. The area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius. And the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So these are nice basic figures. And again, if we want to find the area of, you know, a figure, a basic figure, we have these lovely formulas. But what happens if we have a situation like this? Okay, so here you can see I have a graph. This is an XY plot. And hopefully uh, some of you out there are familiar with this. This is a pretty much uh, kind of basic, uh, uh, what we call a coordinate plane when you study algebra. But you can see here we have this curve. And let's suppose I wanted to find the area underneath this curve right here. So some of you might be saying to yourself, well, uh, sure, no problem. Just give me the formula uh, to find the area of this object, okay? Whatever we call this, this we could call this thing a thingamajiggy or whatever you want to call it. It's not a rectangle. It's not a circle. It's not a triangle. But uh, again, how do we find the area of this? Well, this is where calculus is going to save the day. In fact, there is no uh, formula to find the area of an object like this, right? So... How do we, um, you know, what math do we need in order to find area and volume of crazy looking shapes like this? Well, this is where calculus comes in. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would actually do this problem right here. Well, actually, I'm not going to um, do it. I'm just going to set it up for you so you can kind of understand some of the notation that you may have uh, seen with calculus. So here is our curve right here. And in algebra... Uh, we can actually uh, define or express a curve as a function. That's just a fancy name for a rule. So this right here, this um, y equals x squared, would just be a description, an equation for this curve. So if you wanted to find the area underneath this curve, and you can see this blue shaded region starts at 0. This is 0 right here, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we're looking at the x-axis here. Uh, so from 0 
to 4, the area underneath this curve from 0 out to 4 is what we're talking about. So we can use this notation in calculus. So this thing looks like a, like a stretched out S, and this is what we call an elongated S. So it looks like this. It's kind of a real famous or classic, not famous, but you know, when you, people think of calculus, they really kind of think of this little integral shape, and that's what we call that. But we can write this out this way. So this would be an integral, okay, from zero, we're starting with this zero, out to four, zero to four, and then we're going to find the area underneath this curve, x squared dx. So if we want to find the area underneath a curve using calculus, we use this integral notation, Okay, it says, hey, find the area underneath this curve right here, x squared. All right, start from zero and go all the way out to four. And then this little dx here, that's an important little um, detail, but we'll go ahead and skip that for now. But as long as you understand that, you already know how to kind of write and set up a problem. Now, of course, the second half of this is actually how do we compute the area in this particular problem. Well, let's go ahead and take a nice, simple example. Uh, we're not going to do this problem. I could easily do this problem, but I'm going to do something that we already know how to do. Okay, then we're going to do this problem two different ways. What am I talking about? Well, we're going to actually find the area of a triangle uh, two different ways. So let's check out this uh, situation right here. So uh, here is a line, and in algebra, this would be the y equals x line, okay? Now, y is equal to x right here. This is 1, and this is 1. 1 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis. So this point right here is 1, 1, okay? So y is always equal to x. What ends up happening is when you graph this line, it's basically a perfect, nice little 45-degree line, okay? But here, I'm going to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the dimensions here of this triangle is going to be 6, and then here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the base here is six and the height is six. So let's go ahead and find the area of this triangle. Well, we're gonna go ahead and use our lovely formula that we already know. So the area is equal to one half base times height. So the area would be equal to one half six times six because six is the base and six is also the height. So this is gonna be uh, one half of 36 or 18. Okay, so nice, easy problem, but now we're going to go ahead and use calculus to uh, compute the area of this same triangle. So we know the answer is 18, so let's go ahead and see how calculus will actually generate the answer. And if you understand this, well, you actually will understand, you know, pretty much the essence of calculus, a big part of it, actually. And there's a lot of, um, of course, you know, uh, other details about calculus that you need to know. But if you understand this, I mean, you'll definitely know more probably than the average person walking down the sidewalk. Uh, and you can say, hey, listen, do you know what about calculus? I'm going to teach you a little bit about this in about 15 minutes. All right, so let's get into this problem. So here is our triangle, right? So our triangle uh, goes out to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, of course, it goes up six, but we don't really need that right now. What we need is this equation, y equals x, this defines our um, shape or our curve. Now, in calculus, you can have all sorts of shapes. You can have things that look like this, like this. It doesn't make a difference. What we want to do is find the area underneath this line or shape or curve. So we're going to find the area underneath this line right here. Okay, so we want to uh, write an integral. So we're going to go ahead and write this integral right here. We're going to find the area underneath the x curve. Okay, and we're going to start from zero and we're going to go all the way out to six. Okay, so this is how we're going to set up this integral. And if we could, um, when we calculate this out, this is going to be the area of this triangle. And of course, we know the answer is 18 because we just did this problem right over here, right? So let's go ahead and get into how we uh, actually evaluate uh, an integral. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so in calculus, there's just kind of a bunch of rules that you need to know. And if you're with me so far, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of get this, and hopefully that is the case. So we're going to go ahead and um, 
use this notation to actually compute the correct answer. All right, so what I want you to kind of uh, hone in on is this X right here. So again, in calculus, once you understand kind of the rules, you can evaluate what we call an integral. This is what we're, the topic here we're talking about is integration, which basically means, let me just kind of go back up here real quick. Uh, uh, integration is effectively, we're trying to find the sum of like a bunch of little tiny skinny little rectangles underneath here okay now uh, I've done additional videos about calculus and whatnot but this is effectively what we're trying to do we're trying to really kind of estimate perfectly estimate the sum of all these little rectangles that we could fit underneath this because if we can add up we certainly know how to find the area of a rectangle right so if I'm kind of these are kind of like really bad rectangles but you could see here if I know the area of this rectangle remember the area of a rectangle is length times uh, uh, with right so if I could just add up all these rectangles that would be like super skinny in here add them all up effectively I would have the area of this triangle so in calculus that's kind of a big picture concept that I uh, kind of wanted to mention here and again I'm trying to teach you stuff in about 15 minutes but anyways let's go back to our problem so we're gonna focus in on this X now, when we have this variable x, we don't see a power. It's not like x cubed or x squared. So when you just have an x like this, in fact, there is a 1 up there. Okay, But we don't really write x to the first. We just write that as an x. But you need to make sure that you understand there is a 1 in terms of its exponent. So here is the rule in calculus. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a 1 to the uh, exponent of this x right here. So this is x to the first, so we're going to add a 1 to it, right? So that would be 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is what? It is 2. So whatever the answer is after we add 1 to our little exponent up here, of course this is 2, we're going to divide this entire thing by the answer, which is 2. So this uh, turns out to be x squared divided by 2. Okay, let me say this one more time because it's probably a little bit confusing. So we're going to start, I'm going to start off this way. So what we're going to do is add a 1 to the exponent. Okay, it's always a 1, by the way. There's additional rules, different type of functions. So 1 plus 1 is what? It is 2. So we're going to divide that thing by 2. So we're going to end up with uh, x to the 1 plus 1, which is x squared over 2. Okay, so now we're going to use this piece right here to actually calculate the area. All right, so here is our lovely integral right here, and this is what we call this. So we have this uh, integral from 0 to 6x dx, and we just, don't, don't worry about this right here. This is like a little technical thing that if you actually learn calculus, you'll learn uh, more about. But anyways, this is equal to x squared over 2, okay? I just showed you how we do this. So now we're going to take this thing right here, and we're going to subtract it from itself. All right, so here it is right there. We're going to take this, and we're going to subtract it from the self. And this, this little recipe I'm giving you is the way you would do pretty much, you know, many of the type of problems you're going to face in calculus. You're going to take this thing and subtract it by itself. So we have x squared minus 2 uh, minus uh, x squared minus x squared over 2 minus x squared over 2, right? So this is the setup. But here is the deal, okay? Notice here that I'm um, kind of um, have some arrows that we're going to do here. So for this x right here, this first one, we're going to take this 6 now. Okay, we're going to take this 6 and we're going to plug it in right here. So whatever this top number is. And then for this x, we're going to take this bottom number, which is 0. Okay, so we're going to plug this 6 in right here for that x. And we're going to plug this 0 in uh, right here for this x. Right, so right now, hopefully... Um, you know, I'm not really doing anything crazy advanced. I'm just giving you a little recipe, some directions to follow. Let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so when I plug in a 6 for this x and a 0 for this x, we're going to get what? 6 squared, uh, 6 squared over 2, okay, for this part of the problem. And for this part of the problem, we're going to get 0 squared over 2. Well, let's just go ahead and just deal with this right here. 0 squared over 2 is what? 0 divided by 2. This is just 0. And what is 6 squared? Well, 6 squared is 36 divided by 2 minus, this part, of course, is 0. 
36 divided by 2 is what? It, it is 18. Look at that. We just used calculus to compute the area of this triangle. And in fact, it worked out to be the same answer, not surprisingly, because look right up here, you can see again that this um, triangle here is 18. All right, so that's the area of that triangle. So let's go back to this problem here real quick. And I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to show you that if, in fact, if we wanted to find the area of this, it wouldn't be difficult. Okay, so let's just set this up real fast. We're going to evaluate this integral. Okay, we'll do it over here. So remember, we're going to focus in on an x uh, squared right there. So we're going to take that x squared. We're going to add 1 to it. That would be what? x cubed, and then we'll divide that by the answer, which is 3. So I would literally just subtract its um, uh, this answer from itself, okay? And then I would plug in a 4 for this one, for that x, and I would plug in a 0 for this x. And when I did that number crunching, in fact, I would get the area underneath this curve right here. Okay, so this is your second calculus problem that you learned. And I don't even know how long I've been going in uh, on this video. Hopefully, it's not too much over 15 minutes. But uh, if you understand all of this, you're like, yeah, I kind of get what you're, you're talking about. Well, then you have some, you know, basic appreciation and actual understanding of how to do a very simple calculus problem, okay? Now, if you're interested in learning calculus, hopefully you are. It is a fantastic subject. It is a tremendously powerful uh, mathematics. All the things that we see in our modern life, you know, all the engineering, you know, that we, you know, our cell phones, technology, our cars, airplanes and stuff, all that stuff is, <laughs> all the engineers that design all these things use calculus on a daily basis, okay? The calculus solves tremendous problems for us. So I would uh, hope that you would one day maybe want to take calculus, or maybe you're going to be taking calculus soon. Here's the deal. Don't be overly intimidated by this subject, okay? If you want to take calculus, the, well, what you need to do is build your skill set up to get ready to take calculus, because it is a um, an advanced course. You know, the concepts um, hopefully are not, you know, I've kind of made them a little bit simple for you. But if you actually take the course, and certainly you do have to be ready for it. So work your way up to finish a good, strong pre-calculus course. Again, if you are actually getting ready for calculus, you need to master pre-calculus, which is a pretty challenging course in and of itself. But once you uh, finish with pre-calculus, you'll be ready for calculus. Okay, so if this video was enjoyable, even to the slightest, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.